This is another in a series of videos I've been making about my uh, Bashi uh, pendulum wave machine or wave snake, something uh, like that. And people probably want to know what length to use because that's really the whole gambit. So let me give you uh, a formula uh, you can use, and I'll derive it so you can see where it came from as far as the length of your pendulum. Um, if you just want to use my numbers, uh, I did make a table right here. Uh, as you can see, the blue line is theoretically uh, what the formula said the uh, length should be, or more accurately, the height above the ground. And the bocce balls are where they actually wound up being uh, in the video. These are the parameters I have it set for uh, initially. Um, so let me explain what the, the things in the formula mean. G is obviously 9.81 meters per second squared. Uh, the TD is the time of dance, which is 60 seconds, meaning I set it up so that it takes 60 seconds for the pattern to repeat. Um, CPD is cycles per dance. So for each pendulum, you're picking a whole number of cycles per dance, in my case 60 seconds, um, and it will, will hopefully turn out that way. Uh, I do have a Desmo simulation that I used. I'll put it in the, the description of the video if you want to just put in your numbers and it will spit out exactly what your numbers should be. Um, it's an inverse squared relationship with the cycles per dance times some constant. There is a little bit of a correction factor here for the fact that you're launching it at an angle. Uh, larger launch angles actually increase the period a little bit. Now for relatively low angles it's not a lot, but because we're doing so many cycles um, it does start to add up just a little bit. Um, so here are the parameters. Here's the, the, the result. Um, you know, here's the table of, of the values I used for this particular wave machine. I have another video on its construction. Uh, so the theory is relatively straightforward. So the period of a pendulum, as you probably learned, or are learning now maybe, is 2 pi times the square root of L over little g, the 9.81. So we're going to assume small angle here. Well, period is the same as 1 over the frequency. So I can write this as 1 over frequency equals that same stuff. But we want to solve this for length. So I need to get the 2 pi over to the other side. Uh, well, let's square it first. So 1 over f squared equals 4 pi squared, and then that gets rid of the square root there. So you're going to get that L is equal to uh, G over 4 pi squared times 1 over the F squared. Now this F is your cycles per second. It's a little bit easier to think about this in terms of cycles per dance. So that's the number of cycles per dance for the pendulum in question. Like mine, the first one is 30, uh, divided by the time of the dance. So this becomes L equals G over 4 pi squared times 1 over cycles per dance squared over time of the dance squared. And then the length equals time of dance squared g over 4 pi squared times 1 over cycles per dance squared. Now there is a correction factor for uh, angle and that's 1 over f squared and uh, that value I just looked it up on Wikipedia is a, an expansion, so you put in the initial angle. So if theta was zero, this has to be in radians, by the way. Um, it would just be the same as the small angle, the two pi screw to L over G. But bigger angles, it starts to add more. Um, I do have a Desmos that uh, shows the difference, but basically, by the time you get out to about 23 degrees, it's like 1%. And if you go kamikaze and launch it from 90 degrees, it's about an 18% difference in the... Uh, in the period. In fact, let me pause this. I'll pull that up. So at 15 degrees, it's about a 0.43% difference. At 20 degrees, it's about a 0.77% difference. 
And it's right about 23 degrees is a 1% difference. 30 degrees is a 1.7%. 40 degrees, you're up to a 4%. 60 degrees, it's about a 7.2%. And if you were to try to launch it from 90 degrees horizontally, it'd be an 18% difference. But keep in mind, that's a percent per cycle. And since we're doing so many cycles, in my case, 30 to 43 cycles, it adds up significantly. By the end, I have mine tuned so that it's within a few hundredths, certainly within five to ten hundredths of a second uh, over the course of 60 seconds. I tried to get them all within about two hundredths of a second. I explain how to do that in another video in this playlist uh, using a photo gate. So we've got a relationship for the length of the string. And when we say length, understand it's from the attachment point to the center of your bob. So in my case, from the 2 by 4 itself, the bottom, to the center of the bocce ball. Uh, you can measure that. You might actually find it easier to measure from the floor up. So if you just take the height of your 2 by 4 or whatever you're suspending it from and subtract this length, you may find that a little bit easier to uh, measure. And when you graph that, which I did here actually in that same Desmos simulation. Yeah, I'm really digging the Desmos this year. Uh, you can insert a picture, and I dragged it, so the x-axis you hear is cycles per dance, and on the left is height of the center of mass of the bocce ball above the floor. And uh, when you overlay them, it works pretty well. Now, if you look here, I have a table of all the various quantities. Uh, this L-string, by the way, is the length the string has to be from here to here to here. Um, not that that's critical, it's easier just to measure it up from the bottom, but I, I did it based on the space of these hooks and uh, the, the turnbuckle here, which is key for small, fine adjustment. Uh, but here are the values that I used, if you'd like to model those. And again, the Desmos will be uh, a link in the description where you can put in your numbers. I also put in a column for what I measured for the, once they were set, the height of the bocce balls above the floor and you can see the difference. Uh, most of the time the difference was certainly less than a centimeter. Um, again, the math can only get you so far. At the end of the day, you really do need to fine tune the, the swinging of the pendulum. If you're really interested in uh, what I was talking about with the length of the string, so that would be the length from here to here, you can see the distance between the bocce balls. I went with six inches between the strands and then three quarters of an inch between uh, bocce ball strands themselves. So that gives me uh, six and three quarter inches per bocce ball. The turnbuckle here is key for fine adjustment. You know, a few hundredths of a second over 60 seconds per minute. Uh, I have a different uh, Desmos, which will actually simulate the moving back and forth of the pendulum here. I'll show that in another video, but let me show the, the results. So at the zero seconds, you can see obviously they, they look the same. Five seconds in, you can see they look the same. Ten seconds. At 15 seconds, the green's in the middle, the red's on the outside. 30 seconds, that satisfactory feeling when you know, the green's on one side, red's on the other. Uh, 32 seconds, only because it's starting to show that kind of DNA pattern. 38. Uh, 52, starting to get that sinusoidal back, and then at 60 seconds. By the way, if I was trying to tune this without a photo gate, I might try to capture on video this moment, the 60 second, and then just visually look to see who's out of line and uh, try to adjust their length a little bit. Uh, I'm sure I'll make more videos. This is a very feature-rich project. It's been very enjoyable. Uh, don't forget about the Desmo simulations that'll be at the bottom. Uh, I have videos in this playlist of how to tune it with a photo gate. If you've got the Vernier stuff, I've got a really cool file that makes it a lot easier. Uh, you can put in your parameters for yours in the Desmo simulation at the bottom. It's, uh, it's really a lot of fun. I, I hope this is helping somebody out there. Uh, I think I mentioned I also have a video explaining how I constructed my...